You guys thought I forgot Green Hill, didn't you? Hello everybody, I'm Challenger Jaku and this, well, this is both a small little extra to cover the final stage in the game Green Hill Zone, as well as a channel update as we've never really done one of these, have we? Now upon collecting all of the emblems in the game, 180 in total, by completing each of the stories, getting an A rank in every submission, completing the mini games such as the kart racing, the boss rush and even the chow garden, a question mark will appear on the stage select map where the Green Hills are, and this will take you into an extra stage for all of your efforts, a fully free 3D recreation of the overused yet iconic Green Hill Zone. If you know me by now, you will know that I cannot stand the constant nostalgia pandering prevalent in the series over the past decade, so you would imagine that I would hate this extra stage, right? Well, not really. For one, it's literally an unlockable most people will miss out on, if they only go out of their way to beat the main story. This isn't shoved into the game without really having a good reason for being there. Sonic Adventure 2 was the 10 year anniversary title after all, so it makes sense to at least tribute the series' history up until that point. The stark contrast as to why nostalgia works here, compared to what many fans call the meta error, is that aside from this one stage that you unlock after literally beating everything else in the game, the rest of Sonic Adventure 2 is entirely original, and thus has its own identity as a result. The other reason why I find this to be really cool is that unlike Sonic Generations or even Forces for example, where Green Hill was in name only serving as a motif, they've literally took the exact level design from the original Green Hill Zone and transformed it to work within the confines of a 3D space. This quite literally adds another dimension to what would be a near identical stage, and with Sonic Adventure 2's tight controls, it's just such a treat to run through after being everything else this amazing game has to offer. The question is though, can you beat it ringless? Well, let's find out. Keeping the source material in mind, you'd be right to assume that this stage would be rather linear. Sonic 1 was a 2D game after all, where your choice of alternate routes consisted of either taking a top or bottom path. But in all honesty, I was pleasantly surprised at the sheer scope and openness of this stage in particular. Don't get me wrong, it isn't Sonic Utopia by any means. However, Green Hill, especially compared to the other speed stages on offer throughout the rest of the game, plays very similar to the speed stages in the first adventure game. Level design with a clear and distinct route for you to take, all the while encouraging you to experiment with Sonic's ability. Is. It's incredibly easy to go off the beaten path and out of burns with a simple spin dash jump, so there are a ton of skits for you to perform this by its relatively short length. To the point that literally every single character programmed into the game, minus Eggman vs his mech, can actually beat this level ringless. Crazy right? On the path to the fifth spring there are only two notable ring trails that we have to really avoid. The first declining down the incline after crossing the bridge, and the second after a brief platforming section. Both are easily avoidable just by walking to the side of them, as long as you don't press the B button and light speed dash up the things. Whilst there technically are more ring trails, the rest are literally above you mid-air, which is a blessing since we can just run under them. From the offset, there are a number of neat callbacks that really makes this reward a fitting tribute. For one, the classic bandits are back, and just like Sonic Adventure when you destroy them, you'll be rewarded with an animal for the Chow Garden rather than the Chaos Drive. Even the jumping sound is the same as the original game, it's just a shame that we don't have a jump ball animation to match, which is bizarre, since the bounce basically uses one for its animation. Eh, you can't win them all I guess. Upon reaching the first checkpoint, we actually have two alternate routes to choose from. We can either traverse down the slope leading to the iconic loots of Green Hill, as long as we avoid the ring trails of course, or by platforming up the floating platforms, there is a single ring container here so naturally we take the easier path, rewarding us in the end with a green shield placed on the roof of the loop. Whilst it's nice, I think it would have been really cool wow. to place a life container up here instead, like the one loop in Act 2 of the original game. The spring we can take will push Sonic up to the higher platforms he couldn't reach normally, and I do advise you to take this route. Whilst there are ring trails placed along this narrow ledge, it's here where the stage opens up considerably. From the curved slides within the walls that Sonic will need to roll through getting accelerating speed in the process, a higher route you can take by platforming across the floating foothold, or by spin dashing from this one floating platform just above the ring balloon, Sonic can gain major airtime and distance which practically takes us to the final section of this already short stage. At this point, all we have to do is run forward as the goal lies straight ahead. We did have to make sure we jumped over the ring trail descending down the final slope though, avoiding the dash pad in the process, as I really didn't want to take the risk of being pushed into the path of the rings along the sides. But with that, we've cleared Green Hill Zone without collecting any rings. Now I don't really plan on making channel updates often, unless I have something significant to share. I felt this was the appropriate time for us to have one though, as Green Hill Zone didn't really fit with the tone of the last story. So for the rest of this quick update, the footage will see how the other characters got completing Green Hill Ringless via the character select mod. Now let's talk about what we have coming up for the future of the channel. The last three months have been a wild ride and I'm keen to keep this momentum going. So with that I can confirm yes, both Sonic Heroes and Shadow the Hedgehog Ringless challenges will be coming this year. Ideally I want to produce both of these massive challenges before the end of summer, as with Frontiers coming in the fall I would like to keep that space open. You better believe we'll be doing some Sonic Frontiers challenge runs. Now naturally this will leave a few small gaps open between these next two Ringless challenges, so this is where you'll 
of fan requested challenges come into play. Like the next few weeks, I'm going to make it a tradition to tackle the challenges you guys request during the periods where there isn't really a lot going on, and when I'm not in the process of handling the more ambitious challenge runs. Right now, we have the Sonic Generations run of Super Mario 64 coming up, and I would also like to return to the adventure games as well, where we go through the games without defeating bandits, and also no upgrade runs, so there's a lot to look forward to. I would also like to tackle some of the 2D games as well, not necessarily the classics even though they will surely come up because Origins is coming out in June, but also the 8-bit games at some point, the advanced games, maybe even Rush. There's so many games and so many fun little stipulations we can add to them to make them rather engaging as challenge runs. This brings us to Sonic 06. Now if you've been with the channel since the beginning, you might recall one of the first community posts I ever did. It was a poll where I asked you which version of Sonic 06 you would like me to tackle first under our No Ring stipulation, and the overwhelming support for the PC project was clearly apparent. However, we don't exactly know when Episode Silver would drop. It could be this year or it could be next year. So right now, my plan is to do the Sonic 06 without collecting rings in January, where YouTube slowly dies down for a month after the holiday season. The reason being is that if the final episode comes out around the time of Frontiers, my hands are practically tired at that point as I'll be focusing on the new game at launch. So in short, yes, 06 will be coming, just not right now. If we get to January and nothing has come up, what I might actually do instead is do the challenge one using the 360 version, and then redo the challenge once Project 06 is complete. Because the two games are different enough to actually create unique problems to overcome, that you will simply not encounter in the other version. Just to stress that yes, I will be doing both versions at some point, it's just a matter of when and not if. Finally, that brings us to the announcement of our giveaway. I will bring you guys more details on this at a later date and how you can enter, because it won't be until the fall. I just couldn't think of when else I could announce this. But yeah, I plan to give away a copy of Sonic Frontiers. Anyone can enter no matter the platform you play on. If you win and you want it on the Switch, we'll sort it out. PC? No problem. I mainly want to do this as a thank you to everyone who supported the channel and became a part of this amazing community. I genuinely love talking with you all and so I want to give back in any way I can. More details on the giveaway will be announced most likely in October, so we can iron everything out before the release of the new mainline game. I think with that, I've covered everything that I wanted to say, so for now, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye for now.